Hey everyone and welcome back for another tutorial in my UE4 tutorial series. Uh, in this episode I'm going to go through and add one extra thing to our inventory system uh, series. I know I said we were done but um, I realised there was one thing we could add that would make this thing a lot smoother and uh, fulfil a lot of requests I've been getting. And that is adding a tooltip. So when we mouse over a, a uh, slot, it will show details of the item in that slot. Okay, so let's go through that and uh, finish this series off. So, the first thing we need to do is create the widget for what our tooltip will look like. Okay, so I'm going to go into my inventory UI folder and I'm going to make a new widget blueprint. And it's going to be called tooltip. Uh, actually, yes, keep our naming conventions the same. I'm going to call mine inventory tooltip. Okay, so inventory tooltip. Uh, we don't want our canvas panel, we want to get rid of that um, as we don't want absolute uh, layout, we're going to attach it to the HUD that's already existing and so what we do need is a size box so size box, similar to how we've done our other widgets such as our slots and our uh, window this one we're going to do a width override of let's say 300 and our Minimum height though, uh, our height override though, we're not going to use. We're going to use this one, minimum desired height. Now the reason why we want to do that is because we don't know how much text is going to be displayed in our tooltip. So, if we do this, it means it will be a minimum of 100 for example, and we will then expand out to fit the content. Okay, so that's our size box done. And so I can see it on the screen, I'm going to change from fill screen to desired, and that gets us the correct sizing. So what I want now is I want to add a border onto our size box and our border we're going to change the brush color to uh, something like this. There we go and then I want a vertical box into our border. So a vertical box uh, is basically a panel which allows us to stack all of its contents vertically. Now, how you lay this out will depend on what information you want to show in your tooltip. I'm just going to show the item name and the item description. Okay, so I'm just going to do that. If you want to do like the image or anything like that, um, you should be able to figure it out. If not, uh, message me, email me, whatever you like, and I'll I'll give you uh, some pointers of which way to go. So in my vertical box, I need two texts. So I want text, first text in, and another text in. So the first text, this is going to be our title of the, our item. So I'm going to do underscore ph underscore and item name. And my description, I'm going to do underscore ph underscore item description. So a couple of things with these texts. Now, on my item name and my item description, I want these to both wrap. So if it extends beyond the length of the box, it will just go down to the next line. So this item name here, we're going to scroll down and you'll see auto wrap text. Tick the box and do the same for item description. And I also want to change the font size of my item description so it's not the same as my title. It just makes it easier to read and a and lot clearer to um, the player. So the size here, it's going to 24, we'll change it to 14, yeah, that'll do, and uh, we're done here. So I'm going to create two variables and assign them to these texts, okay? So let's go to the graph, and on the graph here, I'm going to insert a new variable, and this is going to be um, the item name and it's going to be a text type and I want to add another one called item description and for both of these I'm going to expose them and make them editable meaning that when I create this widget in real time I'll be able to set it in real time what am I on about when you create this widget you're able to set these variables on creation click compile go back to the designer and now we need to bind these text values to those 
uh, corresponding variables. So on my item name here, click on bind and choose item name. And on description, bind description. And when we're done here, click compile. And that's about it. So let's close this and let's go to our inventory slot. So we want to go onto the graph editor and this is what we had last time. We've got the construct here. We've got an on mouse button down and whatever else. We're going to make a new event here. And the event we're going to get is mouse enter. So when the mouse enters the slot space, um, we are going to spawn or create our tooltip. So let's do that. Let's go out here, create widget, and choose the tooltip. And as you can see, those variables are now appearing because we ticked that editable and expose on spawn. This is a spawn, here they are exposed. Now we need to plug values into these and we're going to get those from the slot content. So drag out your slot contents, choose get, and we want to split this open. So right open, uh, right click and split, and right click and split to get all the details of the item inside our slot. So we've got the item name going there and the item description going there. So once we create the widget, we now need to uh, attach it to the HUD. So return value, we're going to promote to variable. And I'm going to name mine um, slot tool tool tip. There you go. Slot tool tip. And from there, we're going to get the HUD and add this to the HUD. So our HUD, if you remember rightly, is actually on our player controller. So get the player controller and then we're going to cast it to my player controller. And as my player controller, we can now get the HUD widget. Okay, and then from there, we can get the HUD canvas which is what we're going to attach our tooltip to. So once it's attached there, it means it will show up on the screen. So with it, the HUD canvas, we're going to drag out and go add child to canvas. When we're done, our content for this will be that slot tooltip. Okay, so we've added the child canvas. Now we need to position it and size it correctly. So let's do the sizing first. So on return value, set size, and you want to set auto size, and tick the box. And again from the return value, drag out, and we want to set position. And the position we're going to set it to, it will be the mouse position because we want the tooltip to appear wherever the mouse cursor lands, okay? So the in position is going to come from the get mouse position on viewport. And that will turn the X and Y coordinates, this is a two dimensional vector, X and Y coordinates uh, from the mouse position on the screen and set it to whatever that is in here. Okay, Our, so that will make it appear. And we can test this out if we go into our thing here and let's pick up some herbs. I can right click and you see green herb appear there. None, 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 none. But you see here's the issue is that it's now spawning loads of tooltips, which we don't want because they still stick around. So what we want to do is do it on mouse leave. So we've got mouse enter. We want to check when we mouse leave. And here we're going to simply remove the slot tooltip from its parent. So choose get slot tooltip and then from there remove from parent. And that removes it from its parent panel which is the canvas slot which we set over here. So that will remove it. And the next thing we want to do is actually um, to save it from creating loads of tooltips. Actually it should be right. we won't yeah, it should be alright. We don't need to clear it, I don't think. Let's see. We don't. I don't think we need to clear it. So let's go into our game, push play, and you see there, the tooltip disappears when my mouse leaves, and 
appears when the mouse enters. Like so. Pretty good. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is I don't want it to show none when it's nothing in the slot. Okay, I want to get rid of that tooltip. I don't want it to show if there's nothing in the slot. So from there, I'm going to go to the inventory tooltip and go to the graph and I'm going to go to its construct event. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check on its construct what the item name is. And if it's none, then I'm going to set the visibility of this tooltip to be hidden. So the item name, drag that out, choose get, and then get equals to text. And this will be to a branch. So branch, because we're asking it a question. And the question we're asking is item name equal to another piece of text, which will be literal text. And that's how you, you get that. You can actually type in now some text here, none. So if it is equal to none, so true here, we're going to change the visibility of our entire slot. Okay. And I think we can do it from here. So visibility. Yes. Yeah, set visibility. And you want to change the visibility down to hidden. Click compile. Go back to your game. Now, if I go into my inventory, it won't show the tooltip unless it has oh slight bug there it weren't wrapping automatically straight away oh how weird uh don't know what that is after uh, what could that be mm, let's try resetting let's try and clear that uh memory out so with the slot tooltip when we've done the mouse leave I'm going to drag this out and choose set tooltip. So I'm going to drag that in and leave it as blank. Okay. Let's see if that fixes that little error. Yeah, that seems to. Well, oh, I don't know. Strange. Might be something weird with Unreal. I'll get back to you on that one. It might have something to do with the pre construct. Maybe you have to do pre construct. But anyway, you can see the tooltip working there. Um. And it won't show if there's nothing in the slot. So green herb, a simple green herb that can restore a small amount of health. And the description you set in the items. So herb here. Okay. And if I'm going to go into my rock. I'm going to say here, a sturdy rock. Ready for any building project. Compile play pick up some rocks and there you go and that's all there is to it and that i think will do for the inventory system for a, a while now thank you for watching this whole entire series if you have any questions or concerns or uh, queries you want to ask please leave a comment below or you can message me directly at my email address twitter whatever you really like um, if you like these videos and want to support me in making my videos, I do have a Patreon available, which you can click in the description or on my about page. And you can there uh, donate just $1 a month and you'll get access to videos two weeks ahead of time. So you can get a head start on any kind of video releases we do. Okay, so thank you for your support and thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. See ya.